Tyrannosaurs have undoubtedly been one of the most recognizable dinosaurs. With their giant bodies and bone-crushing jaws these terrifying carnivorous reptiles were the apex predators of their time. Tyrannosaurs have been featured in nearly every dinosaur movies in the past few decades and have become one of if not the most popular and well-known genus of dinosaurs. They probably originated from South America, in the Jurassic, when the continents were joined together. In this video we count down 10 of the largest Tyrannosaur species ever discovered. Guanlong Guanlong was a small 4-meter-long early Tyrannosaur species, with a large distinctive head crest that resembles the ones found on modern-day cassowaries. However, unlike cassowaries, their head crests were likely very fragile. They were probably only used for display. As such the crests were probably a different color to the rest of the body, and may have increased in color intensity as Guanlong reached breeding condition. They lived in China, 160 million years ago, in the Jurassic period, and predates the Tyrannosaurus rex by a whopping 95 million years. Bistahiverser Bistahiverser was a large Tyrannosaur species that lived in New Mexico, 83.5 million years ago, during the late Cretaceous period. These dinosaurs measured 30 feet long from head to tail, and probably weighed at least one ton. Bistahiverser were very primitive, and most likely split off from all the rest of the Tyrannosaur family tree very early. They differ from the other Tyrannosaurs in their genus however. They had four extra teeth compared to other Tyrannosaurs, an extra opening above the eye, and an elongated breastbone known as a keel along the lower jaw. The opening above the eye is thought to have accommodated an air sac that would have lightened the skull's weight. Bistahiverser also had a complex joint at its forehead that would have likely stabilized the skull, preventing movement at the joint. Lithranax Lithranax is a large heavily billed tyrannosaur species, which lived around 80 to 78 million years ago, in what is now southern Utah during the late Cretaceous period. It is estimated that Lithranax could grow up to 30 feet long, and could have reached 2.5 tons in weight. It had typical tyrannosaur features such as the large head, large teeth, small useless arms, forward-facing eyes, and a long heavy tail to balance it while it was running and walking. It probably had a very strong bite, which is common with tyrannosaurs, so its bite might have been similar in force to the American alligator. It was definitely a carnivore from the shape of its teeth. This particular species would not have been a bone crusher like T. rex, but rather more adapted for taking huge chunks out of its prey and waiting for it to die of blood loss, much like modern-day wolves. Delung Delung was a small tyrannosaur that lived during the early Cretaceous. They had a total length of about 5 feet and an estimated mass of 5 kilograms. Unlike other tyrannosaurs, Delung had large forelimbs and three-fingered, grasping hands. What otherwise might have been an unimpressive little dinosaur still managed to shake the foundations of Tyrannosaur and Theropod Dinosaur Study, because Delung had feathers. The feathers that were on Delung were small and really more like hairs, and were almost certainly for the purpose of heat insulation, though they may have also been colored for additional display. The discovery of Delung was the catalyst to the question, were other Tyrannosaurs feathered? We still don't know how to answer that question properly, there is evidence to suggest that they were and were not, and may have varied depending upon age with smaller juveniles being feathered for insulation, but adults losing them, because they were not necessary. Apolichiosaurus Whereas most tyrannosaurs in North America are known from fossils in what was once the western landmass of Laramidia, the fossils of Apolichiosaurus were actually discovered in the eastern landmass of Appalachia, leading to the name Apolichiosaurus which translates to English as Appalachian Lizard. The discovery of Apolichiosaurus has revealed that Tyrannosaurs were probably roaming across both sides of North America during the Cretaceous. Fossils of Apolichiosaurus were found in central Alabama, from the Demopolis Chalk Formation. This formation dates to the middle of the Campanian stage of the late Cretaceous, or around 77 million years ago. One fossil specimen of Apolichiosaurus discovered was found to have a tooth from the giant crocodile Deinosuchus stuck in one its tail vertebrae. 
Based on bite force estimates, Aplichiosaurus likely didn't habitually crush bone like Tyrannosaurus rex, but focused on the flesh of prey. Its teeth were also well equipped for raking down and backwards into flesh. Eodoranus. For the best part of a century the Tyrannosaurs were popularly regarded as large predatory dinosaurs that hunted in what we now call Eastern Asia and North America. What makes Eodoranus different is that it didn't live in Asia or North America, the holotype fossils of this genus were discovered in England. Not only does this make Eodoranus the first Tyrannosaur genus to be discovered in the British Isles, but the first Tyrannosaur to be discovered on the European continent. The holotype fossils of Eodoranus indicate an individual that was about 4 meters long, but this individual was also a juvenile, and fully grown adults would have certainly been larger, though exactly how much larger is difficult to say without a second, ideally adult specimen. Being larger than 4 meters would be just as well however, as the Carcharodontosaurus and the Spinosaurus are both known from the same fossil formation as Eodoranus, and both of these are known to have been much larger than the holotype individual. Albertosaurus. Albertosaurus is one of the more famous Tyrannosaur genera from North America, and one of the last known to live at the end of the Cretaceous before the dinosaurs died out. With the largest individuals reaching sizes of 10 meters long, Albertosaurus had a relatively light build for a Tyrannosaur. The main controversy concerning Albertosaurus is the theory about whether or not they were pack hunters. In Alberta, Canada, the fossils of at least 12, but possibly as many as 26 Albertosaurus individuals were discovered. In addition to this great number, the individuals range from very small juveniles to very large 10-meter-long adults. There are many ways that such a large number of fossils could be read, but the accumulation of such a large concentration of all the same dinosaur and not anything else does suggest that this is not the result of a random placement. If it represents the remains of a family pack is controversial and certainly not certain, but other large theropod groupings have since been found though certainly not yet in such numbers as the Albertosaurus bone bed. Tarbosaurus. Tarbosaurus is a genus of Tyrannosaur that flourished in Asia about 70 million years ago, at the end of the late Cretaceous period. Fossils have been recovered in Mongolia, with more fragmentary remains found further afield in parts of China. The debate about whether Tarbosaurus should be a distinct genus or a species of Tyrannosaurus has been ongoing ever since its discovery as the differences between them and another Tyrannosaur known as Gorgosaurus are only slight. Most modern thinking however seems to support keeping Tarbosaurus as a distinct genus and studies associated with the aforementioned Lithranax above suggest that the Asian Tyrannosaurs are of a group that are distinct but still related to the North American Tyrannosaurs. Tarbosaurus is so far known mostly from Mongolia, with some remains from China. The genus Aeliorimus, which is also known from Mongolia, was once considered to be a juvenile Tarbosaurus, but new specimens of this dinosaur prove that it is a distinct genus from Tarbosaurus, though one that was closely related to it. Uteranus. When Dilunt was found it led to speculation, that smaller tyrannosaurs and juveniles of larger ones probably had feathers. Then in 2012 three individuals of a new tyrannosaur genus were found in Aptian aged rock in China. All three of these tyrannosaurs had feathers, and the largest individual was up to 9 meters long. The idea that only small tyrannosaurs had feathers is now out of the proverbial window, but Uteranus may be an exception not the rule. Analysis of the fossil site suggests that Uteranus came from a colder climate and thus necessitated the need for feather insulation when fully grown. By comparison the limited known skin impressions of Tyrannosaurs from North American indicate that at the time of death these individuals had bare skin and not an extensive covering of feathers like Uteranus. It could be because the North American Tyrannosaurs were living in a warmer climate or perhaps after many more millions of years of evolution they lost their feathers, or perhaps even developed medical conditions that caused feather loss which then partly resulted in their deaths. What is known for certain is that when Uteranus was described it gained the title of largest known feathered dinosaur, comfortably beating the previous record holder, a Therizinosaur named Bipiosaurus. The description of feathers upon such a large dinosaur can easily overshadow 
the overall significance of a discovery. When Uteranus was found, it was three individuals, all of different ages that were found together. Like with Albertosaurus, this raises the question, did Uteranus hunt in packs? Tyrannosaurus. What else could it be? Tyrannosaurus has been by far the most popular dinosaur ever since it was introduced to public in the early 20th century, and since this time whenever a film, book or video game needs a dinosaur for a primary antagonist, nine times out of ten it will be a Tyrannosaurus. Partly because of the popularity, Tyrannosaurus has had to put up with a lot bad publicity, with a lot of people accusing it of only being an obligate scavenger, despite the fact that many of the arguments that claim to prove this can easily be dismissed as nonsense. This is not to say that Tyrannosaurus never scavenged carcasses, it would be very strange if Tyrannosaurus didn't because scavenging is actually normal behavior for all meat-eating animals. But taking advantage of the occasional free meal is very different from only scavenging and never hunting. For the best part of a century Tyrannosaurus was regarded as the largest known theropod dinosaur, and it was not until later in the 20th century that Tyrannosaurus lost this title. Tyrannosaurus is still comparable to the largest theropods. Tyrannosaurus is also regarded as having potentially the most powerful bite of not just any dinosaur, but also any known land animal of all time. This is thanks largely to the size and width of the skull, which allows for larger jaw-closing muscles. In addition to that, the skull width and eye placement would have allowed for visual ability far surpassing that of any human, and even birds of prey like eagles, which are regarded as having some of the best eyesight in the known animal kingdom.